Hey there, beloved saints. I see this often, all right? What, this channel is to get people saved first. Like Brother Darrell said, salvation is just the beginning, people. It's the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. That's salvation. You have God's righteousness because you trusted what Christ did on the cross, that his blood uh, paid your sin debt, and you've been bought with that blood, and now you belong to God. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Why? Because you trusted Christ. You trusted that he gave you eternal life because of his suffering, right? That's that's the first thing. That's salvation, and it's secure, and it, the life you have is eternal. You've passed from death to life. I'm going to give you some verses on that. But a lot of people think they're maintaining salvation by their obedience. All right, first of all, I'd like to ask you, obedience to what? Commandments. What commandments? Oh, the law? By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified to sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Here's the thing. If you think you're maintaining salvation by the law, I would ask you what Paul asked the Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? No. So, once you're saved, now begins your walk with the Lord. And that is about service and discipleship and growth and being meat for the master's use and all that good stuff. All right? But it has nothing to do with you being saved. Let me tell you something. Your obedience is not good enough. I don't care how faithful you are. It is not better than Jesus' obedience. And the Bible says that we're saved because of Jesus' obedience and because we are in him. His righteousness is imputed on us by faith. Therefore, uh, we conclude that a man is justified without the deeds of the law. Being justified freely by his grace, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the good news of the gospel, people. So sorry, your obedience isn't counting. It's not saving you. It's not keeping you saved. I don't understand what people don't get about a birth. A birth is an event. It is not a process. Salvation is not a process that occurs over your lifetime, and you might get eternal life if you are obedient enough. All right? The work of God is to believe on he whom he has sent. That is obeying God, trusting in his son. All right? That's the first thing you have to do. And until you've trusted Christ for eternal life, you're not even in the body of Christ yet. You can think you're obedient, submit your life. How do you submit your life to Christ if you don't even have the Holy Spirit to submit to? What you're doing is you're trying to keep the law in, the, in, the, in your own flesh, and then you get puffed up in self-righteousness. And by the way, your, your standards aren't good enough. God's standards, perfection, one sin is enough. If you sin once, and everyone has all of sin to come short of the glory of God, there's not one righteous, no, not one, then you can't be justified by the law anyway. Even if you could be saved by the law, you can't. Because you offended one, you're guilty of all. So your obedience, you know, they just don't use uh, works and law. Those are the words they don't use. But they're really preaching works and saying it's grace. Now, God's grace will help you as you walk and grow. Absolutely. But you need to be resting in what Christ did. So this, this teaching that, yeah, you're saved by grace, but you must be obedient to be saved. Okay, what you're doing there sounds right, but it's not. Because that's your righteousness and your obedience is not enough. We're going to look at Jesus' obedience, okay? I come to you knowing nothing but Christ and him crucified. That is our salvation. He is our salvation, people. And I will keep fighting for this. It's nothing but the blood. It's the only plea anyone has before God. Jesus' blood was shed for me. That's the only reason. That's it, and that's all. So until we get this, I, I have to keep doing it. I like to get into meat. I went over some the other day about how we should live, our attitude towards sin and stuff like that once we're saved. Uh, I did that a few days ago. I think it's called something like, uh, can I kill, still do this sin and be saved? 
Wrong attitude. All right. So let's um, look at these verses here. All right. Again, your obedience is not good enough. It can't save you. Stop relying on your own obedience and your own righteousness, your obedience to commandments, which are law. The commandments Jesus gave us were to believe on him and love one another as he loved us. And we should all be doing that. But you got to have the Holy Spirit in you to do that. So um, let's go to Psalm. Okay. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. All right. None of them that trust in him. Jesus said this in John 8, 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And we're going to look at Romans 8 to see what he was talking about. He was prophesying of himself and who he is and how he'd be lifted up on the cross. If you keep that, you shall never see death. If you keep, just like Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, the Israelites were bitten by fiery serpents, poisonous snakes. Moses was told to make a bronze serpent, which represents the sin that brings the second death. And he lifted that up on the pole. I believe that was a cross with a serpent on it. And said, if you look at this with faith, you will not die. And Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, so much I be lifted up and draw all men unto me. So when he was lifted up on the cross, we, we behold him crucified and we do not see death. Do you understand that? We're healed from the second death. You either trust what Christ did or you do not. You are trusting in your own obedience and good luck with that because you will be standing without a Savior. We need to trust in the obedience of Jesus Christ for our salvation. And we should be obedient once we are saved. Because now we have the Spirit to guide us and we should always walk in Him. If you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. We believe that. So he says, truly, truly, if I say to you, if a man keep my saying, he will never see death. You need to keep that at the forefront of your mind. Let's go over to John 8. Then they said unto him, these are religious Pharisees, who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. They don't believe he's the promised one of God. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I've heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, this is talking about his crucifixion, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. There's Jesus' obedience. That's what you need to rely on. Not your own. Guess what? You're not obedient enough. It's not perfect. That's your righteousness. You are not being saved by keeping commandments. All right? Now, once we're saved, we are keepers of his commandments in our hearts. We're the one that keep them. They are in us. All right? Let's see. And he spake these words, and many believed him. And Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my words, then you are my disciple indeed. You're not saved by being a disciple. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What's the truth? He's the son of the living God. He died for sins. He was buried, and he rose again the third day. If you trust in what he did, you have eternal life, and you will be free. Uh, so, let's see. I want to go over to some verses on Jesus' obedience here. Romans 5. But not as the offense. This is talking about Adam's sin. Okay, how everybody is mortal and dies and is a sinner because of Adam. Jesus is the second Adam. So everybody can have life because of him. See, through one man's sin, many be dead. Through one man's obedience, many be made righteous. Not your own. All right. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. What is that? Salvation, eternal life. For if through the offense of one... Many be dead, 
much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by the one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses under justification. All right? But if one man's offense, death reigned by one, see, if one guy's sin brought death to everybody, much more they which receive abundance of grace. There's your hyper grace, people. And the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Whose obedience? The obedience of one. Therefore, as by the offense of one, Adam, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. All men to condemnation. So, by one guy's sin, judgment, death, condemnation came upon all people born. Jesus, the second Adam, came to fix that. Did he fix it or not? Most say no. They don't believe him. They believe the first Adam's sin was more powerful than the blood of Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Even so, by the righteousness of one. Is that your right? Are you the one? I'm not the one. Jesus is the one. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Whose obedience? Are you the one? No. Your obedience is not good enough. It's not keeping you saved. It's not getting you saved. That is a matter of fellowship and reward, not salvation. That's work salvation, people, plain and simple. I don't care how you word it. Obedience, faith that worketh by love, however you put it in there. If you add some kind of works to the gospel, null and void. Christ is of no effect to you. You either trust what Christ did and his obedience, or you're trusting your own. There's no mixture. None. All right? Let's look at that again. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Obedience of one. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. See, the law was given so we could see our sin. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin is reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. It's his righteousness, it's his obedience that we're saved by. All right, look at Philippians 2. It talks more about his obedience. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And by the way, all of us who are saved by grace through faith, which are the saints, we believe in being obedient to the Spirit of God in us. We don't need the law. We don't need it. We're keepers of it. We have it right here. But we're not justified by any of it. We're already saved. And we want to walk out who we are in Christ already. That's it. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Even though he was God manifest in the flesh, he made himself a humble servant made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. See, the Muslims accuse us of worshiping man as a God. No, it's God who pre-existed who came as a man. Big difference. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, praise God, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, if you have always obeyed 
not in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, these are saved people. Do you want to know how to work your salvation out with fear and trembling? you got to have salvation before you can work it out. It's got to be in here to work outward. That's what working salvation out is. You've got to have it. You don't work out legs if you're an amputee. you got to have legs to work them out. you got to have salvation to work it out. And in the Old Testament, it says, Serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling. That's where Paul gets this from. Okay? So serve and rejoice. To be saved? To stay saved? No, because you are saved. Work that salvation outward so that God can do in you his will and his pleasure as a servant, as his child. All right? So people are mixing this up. See, he's mentioning Jesus' obedience, which saved us. And so your obedience should be like his, the mind of Christ, which is in you. So we should obey that spirit, that mind, and that uh, spirit of Christ in us. Uh, people got this mixed up. To think that uh, their obedience to commandments is keeping them saved or getting them saved. But salvation is of the Lord, is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You, you think you're going to get to heaven and say, I was saved because Jesus died, plus I was so obedient. Not going to happen. Are, are we promoting not being obedient? Of course not. I'm trying to get you to see to not trust in yourself in any way. That your obedience is a matter of reward. But the one thing you must obey is trusting in Christ. Hebrews talks about that. He's the author of eternal salvation to those who obey him. And what was he talking about? Telling them not to trust in the Levitical law system and trust in the finished work the once for all sacrifice of Christ. So uh, anyway, I hear this all the time. Yes, but you must be obedient. Okay, you should be obedient once you're saved. You can't even begin to be obedient if you're lost because you're just doing stuff in your flesh. You have to have the spirit to be able to submit to the spirit. So again, I'm trying to get people in the body of Christ and not religious, but in Christ. Uh, so hopefully somebody will get this, man. I, I Sometimes it was so funny the other day, somebody was doing a live stream and said, you know, I was sitting in the church for years and I kept asking about for the truth and took Renee yelling at me like for a year. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just, I'm, on, I'm on fire for the gospel, man. I hate every false way. I hate lordship salvation, which is really just blatant work salvation. as It's, it's almost identical to Catholicism minus the idolatry. So, uh, you know, I, the gospel message is the greatest news ever, and it's been lost. And they said that grievous wolves would come in, not sparing the flock. And that already happened at the end of the first century. They started to move away from the simplicity in Christ. And so thank God we got God's word here to show us that it's only Jesus that saves. He is Savior. It's only what he's done. And it's trusting in what he's done that gives us salvation he is the author and finisher of our faith. Um, okay, guys. God bless.